G'day everyone, today we're making electrets. We're going to use the traditional um, recipe, goes dates right back to the early days of electrostatic research. We're going to use this Kanabua wax, which is a, a natural wax, comes from an African tree. It's uh, particularly non-conductive and it's the hardest known natural wax. It has um, a unique molecular structure, which uh, is pretty much ideal for making electrets. Here we have white rosin, same stuff um, gymnasts might use on their hands or rock climbers. Uh, this is a fairly coarse crystalline stuff that I got quite cheaply. And these are mixed approximately 50-50 by mass and melted together. The end result is quite brittle because of the hardness of both of these materials, so we plasticize it with about plus 10% by mass pure beeswax. This is just normal white beeswax as you might make a candle or for preserving or whatever the heck else people use beeswax for. Again, this was cheap, just got it and it seems to work fine. You could probably use paraffin wax or any number of other things, but beeswax is more likely to be miscable with these two once they're melted. So, into the beaker they go, and I've got it here on the stir plate um, with a magnetic stirrer. Melt them down, you get this sort of deep amber coloured solution. Um, it outgassed a little bit for a while too, and there's sort of a turpentiney odour, which might have been some residue in the um, in the rosin. But uh, once all the bubbles stopped and it had been degassed for a while, I then moulded it in a mould that I made here. The mould, as you can see, has two pieces of PCB material for electrodes. They're covered with Teflon tape as an insulator and also as a release agent. And in between, there's a PMMA mold which I laser cut. It's just a cylindrical cavity in there. It's also a thermocouple so I can tell what temp what's going on temperature-wise. The whole thing there is polarized to about 10,000 volts using this Coronatron power supply. And the material is poured in hot. I preheat the mold a little bit with a hot air gun just to make sure it doesn't freeze instantly to the sides. And allow it to cool down back to room temperature before demolding it. Once it's demolded, I immediately wrap the electrode in a uh, aluminium foil to protect it so it doesn't depolarize. And I'll let it set for, I don't know, probably a few hours before I play with it. So let's go have a look at the electrical properties of the end result electrode material. Okay, so to study these electrodes, we're going to use this electrometer that I built. It's a kind of differential electrometer, it only responds to changes in electric field, but it's bipolar and it will tell you which polarity of charge is approaching or, or being, well, essentially the change of electric field around these antennas. You can see it's got six transistors, six resistors, two LEDs, and that's about it. Circuit diagram wise, I, I built this to pick up people walking around here at work. During winter it gets quite dry. There's a lot of static electricity and um, we were always zapping things in the lab. But one of the consequences was there was fairly strong electric fields generated whenever people walked around, so I built this crazy looking thing that would just blink when people walked past. Anyway, here's the circuit diagram. There's not much to it. You may have seen circuits like this around being talked about for many different things, but uh, pretty simple. You should probably build one because they're a lot of fun. But they're also pretty darn useful, as I'm about to show you. Okay. so. Here we have a piece of beam material, double-sided, glued to a piece of glass. This is basically an old-fashioned electrophorus. We have another one here that I've earthed, and I'm going to take the electric material that we made earlier. I've got it wrapped up in the alcohol to protect it. Okay, so you can see it's a brown-looking waxy thing. Not a particularly good moulding job, there's some shrinkage, etc. I've still got to work on that. But this froze in an electric field of about 10,000 volts a centimetre, so it's got quite a strong electric charge embedded in it. It's actually raising the hair on the back of my hand. Anyway, so if we take our electrometer here and we approach it with one side of it, you can see that we get the red, oops, focus, the red LED here lights up. Now if I turn it around, blue LED lights up, and you can note that when I pull away, the opposite LED will light up. If I just turn it around, you can see the actual electric field from this is, it's actually not that strong, but this electret hasn't been made for very long, so it's probably still in the process of reversing. I've marked each surface, 
and I'm going to test it again tomorrow to see if it still has the same polarity. This particular electret is well known for doing, going through a polarity reversal 24 to 48 hours after being created. Doesn't matter, for our purposes this will work fine. So, we can create a kind of infinite electrophorus here. If I put it on the earth plate, you may have seen electrophoruses before where you charge up something and then you transfer the charge by induction to a metal plate. So if I put the metal plate on top of the the electrode, the electrode is pushing the electrons here into my finger when I touch it, and now I've charged the plate. If I approach this, you'll see it turns blue. Now if I discharge this to earth, and I flip the electrode over, do the same thing again, it'll now light the red LED. Also the blue obviously when I pull away, because this is a charged object. So this is a pretty good indication that this is actually an electret and it's working quite well. There's a lot more things you can do with electrets. I might follow up with some videos about making electrostatic motors and um, electret microphones, you name it. They're essentially the electrical analog of a magnet. They're a permanent electric field stored in a, in a physical solid that uh, has a high impedance and will very slowly leak away the charge. Super interesting stuff. Anyway, more next time.